Hello everyone, you're listening to Pink Nia and Nicole on the Real Out Loud podcast. Join us as we discuss how to survive when we find ourselves reeling from life's difficult and sometimes unusual situations. Let's go and join our host. Hi guys, this is your girl Nicole and with me is... Thank you, Nia. Yes, and today we are going to be talking about a very sensitive topic that has been one of the second and most leading pandemics that um, have been in discussion either on social media, on the news, on every platform that you can read about, you know, society, lifestyle and all that. Male violence against women has been declared the second pandemic. So today we're going to be talking about some of the triggers that we find in the society. Are we as the society developing certain perceptions or behaviors that actually lead to stereotyping that actually cause people to or influence people to react in a certain way towards each other? What role do the stereotypes that we put out there play in making men violent and we are also going to look into how certain you know our daily exposure to media influences Mm -hmm. either it can be a drama series that you love watching on the tv it can be music that you expose yourself to it can be general comments that people pass on the social media platforms it can be a sport that you love how do these actually you know broadcast violent behaviors and does it in a way influence um, how we then solve the problem or how then people react in the different spheres of their lives and furthermore we're going to talk about what change can we as the generation of today actually bring so that um, people can avoid acting in such violent ways is there something that we can do about it is there a word of knowledge that we can spread out there that can help people moving forward? So when you t- hear of violence, Pinky, what's the first thing that's coming into your mind? A lot of the things that we see when we look at a person come out of what's going on in their minds. You know, like aspects such as character, personality and attitude are formed in large part as a result of our brain chemistry. So okay. When someone becomes violent, they're only projecting what is in their mind or what they are feeling. Or substance abuse and like people take substances, then they become abusive towards Mm. others emotionally, verbally and physically. Could we actually say uh, people blame it on the the alcohol alcohol or or the substance? But is it really the alcohol or the substance consumption that is linked to violence or probably it's just something that you've always been restraining in yourself. Yeah. Now you have something to hide behind, but you have always wanted to. Your guards are lowered. Yes. Now you can just be fully yourself without anything drawing you back a bit. Maybe the substance actually help you to project Mm. what, what's in you, what is in your mind. Or okay. your emotions, yeah. Okay, so basically we're saying that when you take it in excess, that's when it can bring a confusing, a difficult or an uncomfortable reaction to a situation. Yes. Even, you know, stressful situations, danger and fear can trigger automatic responses, one of which can be violent. You know, when you have fight or flight, mm-hmm. then... What are we referring to as violence? Because I'm just thinking... Probably when you talk of violence, you're talking about a physical force or uh, reaction or response to a situation with the intention to injure someone or to destroy property or those things around you. Cause That's harm. violence. It's Excuse done me. with the intention to the, cause yes. harm. Violence is done with intentions to cause harm. It, it's, it's generally in our nature as people to want to exercise that dominance over other people. So that's when we then end up becoming violent in an act. Let's say if you don't afford me the respect that I feel I deserve, I will violently get it out of you. That's why you find sometimes a man finds it easy 
to lay their hands on a woman mm-hmm. because they're saying, you don't respect me. You don't talk to me like that. But is that a way to communicate mm-hmm. our reactions to problems? They can actually be disproportionate and flawed, right? Yeah. Sometimes the reason why we react in those flawed or disproportionate ways, it's because we've got unresolved mental health issues True. that we haven't dealt with. And you know, families often don't actually address mental well-being early enough to check on how well people are before they get strained to the point of acting out in violence. We just turn out to be like, ah, that's 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 him. That's how he is. Like we uh, don't address the situation. The issue at hand. Yeah, we sweep it under the carpet. Mm. Let's say, for example, a child slaps the other child. Yeah, we don't reprimand or teach them better ways. Mm. And it, it come to think of it, there is stigma that is actually associated with mental wellness that makes men themselves to actually be reluctant to get the necessary psychological help they need. Most people, they can, they don't, they find it very like kind of like hard to express their emotions, and speak feelings. about it. Yeah. yeah. So you find that even going to get help it can be seen as a sign of weakness. Yes. I don't talk about my problems. I'm a man. I'm supposed to I don't have to time to be talking with this. about problems. Yeah. Yes. And they are reluctant about it. Exactly. I think sometimes it's also because of that fear and shame that they may have in the different situations. Like the fear of feeling vulnerable. Yes. The fear of, you know, feeling humiliated or being ridiculed by other people as a result of seeking help. Or, you know, I think or I feel many in our country have been exposed to severe and resolved traumas. Okay. You know, domestic violence, mm. political issues, mm. unrest, and extreme economic hardships. Mm. It, when you're talking of that, I'm thinking of the high unemployment rate in yes. the different, you know, African countries that we find ourselves in. And some people find the pride in having to be the provider. Yes. Remember, we're talking about the provide. dominance. Yeah. And then now Security. you are in a position where you have to be the one provided for. Rather, you're going to struggle with certain, you know, emotional issues that you can't necessarily exercise the power somewhere else. And then you end up projecting it in the way that you deal with the people that are around you as well. In a violent way. Yes. Besides growing up in a in a very like violent household, sometimes our own cultures as well. Yes. <laughs> They've got a way of equating kind of like physical dominance or power or violence or authority to being, you know, to being a, a courageous person, yeah. a strong person. And that in a way kind of like unconsciously encourages violence in people. Like, if you cannot fight, then you're not man enough. Mm. Yeah. If you cannot voice your voice or you cannot be heard, mm. you are not man enough. You mm. have to have the final word. You have to have the final say. And like, a woman yeah. is not allowed to talk back. When I say exactly. my word is final and my word is rule. So mm. if that doesn't happen, then they project violence. It's strange how even presently we still have these norms in place that grant men like absolute control over mm. the females mm. and accept violence as a way of resolving conflict. Come come to think of it, like mostly when you see a couple has fought, maybe the wife has been beaten. When the family sit down and they want to resolve the issue, they're asking the woman, what, what did, did you, you do, do to, to provoke him? him? But the that reality is, the is question, yeah. what did he do it, to it, her? Yeah, it ends there. What did he do to her? Or the effects are there. They're very visible. You can tell what he did. Can we deal with that first? What did he do to her? Mm. But you see, like the norms that, you know, people think a man can just exercise his masculinity without being provoked you, and yeah, whatnot. Pushed. You so pushed already into... they are giving people, it's kind of like giving people the room to actually act on the violence because now a person will have something to hide on 
They say, you know, yeah, I've been provoked. The 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 society stigma that men, mm. yeah, you know, when a man, I they do things and they might get away with them. Mm. You know, it's it's like cheating. They're like, yeah, men cheat. What did you expect? Exactly. I like the term they use in our like in our language. Mm-hmm. They say. <laughs> This is what these men do. Like, yeah, and he's like, I'll see where we go. You're, you're not, not the, the only, only one. one, you know? Yeah. It's been happening since the generations of your grannies and your grannies. And that's not the proper way to address it. You know, sometimes relationships stress us as well, such as, let's yeah. say, um, infidelity. Yes. When there's infidelity in a relationship or when there's financial disputes, or certain rigid gender roles like you were talking about to say men should do this or that. Mm. Maybe the woman should do the chores, she should do the cleaning of mm-hmm. the house, the laundry mm-hmm. and whatnot. Sometimes it then affects the roles in the relationship and it affects the levels of respect that people afford each other in a relationship. relationship and yeah. it ends up causing stress to the point that people start to exercise their frustration and their emotions through the physical responses of what of the violence itself. Yeah. But when you're talking of this violence, are we only talking of the violence of the abuse within a family setup? Or are we talking of the violence within, you know, in a broad spectrum, like maybe in boyfriend and girlfriend relationships? Because we find that there are ladies, a girlfriend you were seen online last night at 10 p.m. at night. And mm. then tomorrow you have to answer to it. The next thing is a slap on your face. Why you were you online? To? Who were you talking to? Because you were not chatting to me. But is that how we're supposed to handle things? No, definitely not. And even in, in children, parents mm. they might turn violent on their own children. Mm. Parents who grew up in very harsh, Set like authoritative environment. yeah. I- environments as well they tend to become the harsh them, themselves and it's to the exercise yeah. the violence. Violence is not only in the violent act of lifting your hand to beat someone. Yes. It can be the words that you say to a person yes. that belittles them, undermines them, uh, makes them feel inferior or less of a yes. person. Like you can find a person saying, there's this statement that I used to hate so much. Mm-hmm. You find a woman who's saying, to a child, you know? Like, you big-headed child. You know, those are terms that are very demeaning for the child. And it's violence in its own essence. You know, a woman is crossing a street and the child is following behind. They're like, why are you taking forever? Like, I I find that very emotionally hurting. Then they grow up with that. Exactly. And they find it normal to actually insult someone like that. And if you have an authoritative parent like that or a parent who's, who doesn't nature your feelings, you never learn how to self-regulate or how to contain your own emotions. Mm-hmm. It will become something that's very new to you. That's why the moment you're provoked, the first thing you want to do is you want to act on it physically. You want to address it in a way that exercises power and control over people, but without getting to the point of understanding what you are actually feeling and how you can cool yourself down. And as we move on, like just thinking of some of the, remember we say that there are certain perceptions or maybe behaviors that can lead to stereotyping, uh, playing a role in how, you know, people become violent over time. There has always been a, a, an expectation that men must play a role of a leader, you know. Mm-hmm. But when society fails to match the expectation by equipping its men to be good leaders that it needs, we, we only say you need to be a good leader, you have to be a better leader, you have to lead. But mm-hmm. then we're not equipping or teaching them on how to do that. Mm-hmm. Them themselves, they are lost Okay, mm. I want to be a good leader, but then how do I go about it? So they end up failing to mm. do so, you know. And so you're rather pressuring them yes. <laughs> than you are empowering them. Yes. You end up with a lot of men feeling pressured rather than empowered. Yeah. It's strange how most women in the different societies that we find ourselves, they're only valued as a mother or as a wife. 
but they are not seen as more more than that. More than that. Yeah. yeah. It's actually a shame. It's an achievement to to be a mother or to be married. Mm. You feel like you've been elevated. Mm. And you know, like uh, thinking of that, now when you're talking of that, I'm just thinking what do women who actually are struggling with infertility issues have to go through if they are only seen as you are a mother and you are a wife. If you can't be a mother, then, then what are you dealing yes, with? Then it goes back to those family gatherings and, and think you are not valued, your opinion is not even counted. Which leads us to another topic for another day, guys. Yeah. Just be on the lookout. We're going to talk about fertility issues mm-hmm. and like women, how they affect their mental well-being and all that. Just be on the lookout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just looking at our daily exposure to social media, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's the news, it's TikTok, yeah. uh, Facebook, whichever. For example, like a drama series or Netflix or some way, mm-hmm. showing the lives of people that are broadcasting men and their violent behavior. Um, exposure to media violence immediately increases the likelihood of aggressive behavior for both children and adults. Okay. And so it does influence us by making us more keen to use a violent approach when we're trying to solve problems or when our daily media programming teaches us that mm. to, to get results, you must be <laughs> aggressive in violence. Like when you're watching a movie and then someone does something that you don't like and this person just turns away and then they flip over the table. Yeah. What yeah, are you like, learning out of that? What is the child learning out of that? They're thinking this is the proper this way is... to regulate your behavior. Because remember, our children, sometimes they don't learn from listening. They learn from observation. Yes. That's why regulation of TV or media exposure is very essential with kids. As a parent, you've got access to have parental control of whatever yes. your children yes. watch, whatever they internalize. Because that is shaping and modeling their behavior, whether you like it or not. It leads to experimentation uh, with violence and and can reinforce beliefs that violence is socially acceptable as portrayed in the media. Mm. But in as much as we sometimes see this violence on social media, let's clarify one point. It's not always wrong for social media to show us the violence that is outside the because remember, when we see the violence on the news, maybe someone mm-hmm. is being beaten. Like, you know, when we were watching the, the looting, the times yes, of the looting, yes. you know, people were looting from behind the news reporter. Yes. But those, we were not being shown those things so that we can act on them. We were being shown those things because that is what is happening in our society. It was more of a measure to conscientize us on the events of what is happening in our surroundings surroundings so that we find solutions to how do we resolve some of the problems. It doesn't mean that if anything is showed on social media, then then you have to act on it as a person. So it's not a justification as well on on the other end to say, you know, people cannot blame social media to say, I'm violent or I'm acting a certain way because I've been exposed too much to this kind of a content. You've got a choice and an instinct to choose between what is right and what is wrong as an individual. And um, what change can we bring? Mm. I'll go back to to that point where we said we want our men to be leaders, but then we do not teach them. Mm. We need to teach. We need to have those social... Uh, platforms where we have our boys, where we have our young adults gather Mm. and we pour our wisdom on them. We teach them the better ways on how to treat each other as as humans. Mm. We cannot just say be a better person. person. So if I see a a child who's growing up in a violent environment or a violent family, My responsibility as a person is to help that child discontinue that pattern Mm -hmm. that maintains the violence, either by helping the child be removed in such a violent environment or set up or by nurturing them. Or maybe 
revising media content that people watch. You know, if mm. I have, I'm seeing that this child is going through a certain experience. Remember, what you internalize is what you become as well. Yeah. So the more you are going through certain difficulties and you're internalizing negative re- reactions, you are not learning how to control yourself and to contain yourself, but you are rather feeding that that thing in you that wants yeah. to fight back, that wants to yeah. revenge, that wants to see other people hurt as much as you are hurting. So what what would be important is kind of like to filter or censor the kind of content that this that person is exposed to. Yeah. And also to our fellow women out there, you know, living under abuse, they must be empowered so that they are no longer dependent on their abusers. Exactly. Remember, we're talking about the boyfriend, girlfriend, mm-hmm. like the slapping and mm-hmm. whatnot. It starts there because some people, they enjoy it and they mm-hmm. think they are doing themselves justice. You mm-hmm. know, And also efforts must be made to not only educate, but um, empowerment toward being responsible in leadership roles. Like I said earlier on, they, you know, let us avoid a rewarding aggression. Exactly. Sometimes... Um, people need to learn that they can't just get things their way. You can't always be dominant. You can't always be in control and have power all the can't time. always have your way. Especially over other people. That is impossible. We need to set out clear expectations and make it clear that, that there are consequences to acting out in violence. You know, this also speaks to the prosecution of violent crimes. If someone abuses you, a report, mm. you know, if I am beaten up, I have to report it, be it my husband, my boyfriend, my brother. You know, how we resolve violence within a community setup, it's 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 not one man a one man show. Yeah. It's a family, it's a societal show. You know, what do you think of people who stone people that have been violent? You know, there are still societies that, who yeah, do that. They punish violence with, with violence. violence. What are you teaching out of they that? They are violent themselves. Acting out on violent acts or feelings or emotions, we are actually feeding and increasing that age for violence. So if we enjoy engaging in aggressive behaviors and it is rewarded, it makes us more likely to engage in it again. So... Aggression only reminds us of the possibility of being aggressive in response to our frustrations, making us most likely to be violent the next time we face a problem. So let's help each other from the time a person is a child. Let's teach them how to regulate their emotions, how to contain their emotions in much healthier ways that do not kind of like feed and increase that age to yes. act on the violence. Remember, we're talking about empowering people, mm-hmm. teaching them to be leaders. If we are holding people who are violent and aggressive and display who display wrong behaviors, wrongful behaviors, if we are holding them on a pedestal, what's most likely to happen is children are going to learn from those people. Yes. They're going to admire, desire to be like them, you know, idolize them, and they're going to want to be those people. It'll be the Even way adults... Go. Let's not talk about children only. There are adults who actually look up to certain people and they are, they live their lives yes. going by certain people. You know, we've we, when we were growing up, we'd hear these stories where this person buys a couch and then the next door neighbor wants to buy a couch. Same well. couch yeah. We still copy from each other. So if we hold people who have done wrong on a high pedestal, then we are not doing justice in our societies. We need to make everyone conscious of what is right and what is wrong. Some people need help to be able to differentiate yes. and demarcate yes. that line. Some people, they need, the like you, we're talking, the law to, to get into act yeah. so that it helps them to decide and to come back from the negative behaviors. Some people can use a sport as well yes. to let out that frustration. You are in a controlled environment. You can express your feelings, your frustration, but you are taught how to contain yourself in certain ways without harming those around you or the properties around you as well. So they can be a sport that you can join. And sport actually comes with with, uh, principles and Mm. rules. Mm. You cannot uh, practice your karate anywhere and everywhere. 
Mm. It also teaches you the calmness, how to deal with situations before you resolve to to violent acts. Mm. So definitely spot. And remember, we talked about mental illness that goes unnoticed and unresolved. Yeah. Sometimes those things, they actually need people to be under medication as well. Yes. To seek medical treatment, to learn skills that are going to help them. The medical treatment will kind of like help with the chemical imbalances in their mind, in their brain. That helps them or makes them to be more aggressive over time. And then the skills part will help them on the self-regulation that we're talking about. Because it's not always when you're going to learn that from your parents how to yeah. contain and how to control your emotions. Because probably you come from an environment where you're not allowed to fully express. Like, you know, men are not supposed to talk. Mm -hmm. You are mm -hmm. supposed to be strong. This and that. Those, you know, stereotypes we're talking about and those perceptions. So learning those skills will help you also. So there are many strategies, guys, that we can help each other out there. But um, let's work on identifying the behaviors in each other identify the behaviors in yourself, get help when necessary, direct people to the necessary resources that are going to help them out of yes. the violent acts. If there's something that you have an interest on that we might have possibly not talked about in this particular session, I know violence is a very broad, a broad topic, topic yeah. but you are welcome to bring in your inputs. But let's talk about this. Let's discuss this in the comment section, in our emails. Guys, we're loving the feedback. We're loving the comments. We are loving the interaction. Thank you so much. And keep spreading the word. Check out the rest of our episodes on YouTube, Apple, and Google Podcast, or anywhere you get your podcasts. There, you'll find more topics that you or a friend will definitely be interested in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.